Well, students, we're gonna have some fun designing some pots today um, with some patterns and some lines and some shapes. I'm gonna give you one of these. Everybody will get their own. So I would like you to line it up and hold it. Take your pencil and trace around it. Once you have traced around it, then you can start using some line and pattern. I'll put up a couple posters, but if you want to make the top look a little bit more round, like it's got an opening, sometimes I'll take this and I'll just put a curved line in here and then it'll look like this top shape of the pot is open and I'll end up coloring that in darker. But with the top part, I'm kind of thinking about it with the top and the middle and the bottom. With the top here, I'm gonna make one pattern at the top, I'm gonna to do a different pattern in the middle and a different pattern on the bottom, just so that it's not all the same. So here, I'm gonna start with curvy, and then I'm gonna go with straight, and then I'm gonna go with curvy. So those pattern, those lines repeat to make a pattern. Then I'm gonna do a different pattern in the middle here. You could use lines or shapes. I think I'm gonna use a combination of shape and line for this. I think I'm gonna do this, which is kind of like a square line. Sometimes I call it a step up line where it steps up and then it steps down. Steps up and then it steps down. And then it steps up. So um, if I wanna do something with shape as well, um, I might do like a step up line and then do a dotted line. And I'm gonna do a combination of big dots and small dots just so that it's not all the same thing. And if some of these dots are really big, I can usually fit a smaller dot on the inside. Just that's gonna give me a little bit more color. So I've got step up, dots, and then I wanna make sure that I get my step up here too. Please make sure that yours is not the same as mine. You can come up with your own pattern because you guys are great artists. So just thinking about what you think will be good. And then I'm gonna do one more pattern at the bottom. I think I'm gonna do for this one, I'm gonna do zigzag line And I'm gonna do um, eh, I don't know I'm gonna do a broken line but I'm gonna make them more like a rectangle so I've got zigzag broken and then I'm gonna have zigzag once you have a pattern at the top one in the middle and one at the bottom I will give you a marker and I would like you to begin tracing it out carefully. So here I'm gonna trace this out, following my line. Now if I miss the line a little bit, I can just take my pencil and erase it. Usually if I were working on this at my desk, I would be turning the paper a little bit, but I don't want it to not be able to be seen on the recording. So I'll do my best just keeping it in one place. So trace out your lines. Don't forget to trace out the shape of the pot too. And then trace out your pattern. When this is all done, I would like you to do a little bit of erasing. You can also see that my patterns that I made are very big. I don't wanna have my lines or my shapes too tiny because then it would make it hard to color it. So try to keep your lines, patterns, and designs quite large. You do not need to go as quickly as I'm going. I'm just trying to go fast so you have more work time. So here is my last line. 
Now that I have all my lines done, if you can see any pencil, just take it and erase it. So here, erase out any of my pencil. We're just gonna pretend that I'm done because this is not. This is something that's gonna take us more than one art time to do. So I'll start on a little bit of color, but do not feel like you need to color the whole thing. So here, I've got a little more erasing to do at the bottom. I'm just gonna work on the top. If you do want to make the top look like it's open, pick a dark color, could be black or gray or dark brown or something. And if I fill this in, it's gonna make it look like the pot is more 3D or that it's open. Like I could put something inside, whether that's a vase and like put flowers inside or put in water or use it to be functional. Now when that's done, I'm gonna start making my pattern. I'm gonna put up the color wheel too so that you can think about colors that would work together that would, um, that would mix well. Now something that always works is like doing dark red and light red, dark blue, light blue, dark green, light green. But you can also pick a color that's next to it on the color wheel. So here, I'm gonna start off with this one being of a dark, dark pink color. And I'm gonna outline it by pressing it on hard, staying inside my pattern. I'm even doing it twice. I'm gonna do a dark pink, but then I'm gonna fill it in with a light pink. I'm trying not to touch that black because I can see right there it's smeared. So if you do use black, try to keep it separate. So if you outline it with one color and you fill it with another, it usually looks really nice. Then I'm gonna do one on the color wheel with orange. Orange is right next to red, but orange is also next to yellow. So I'm gonna use orange as my outline, and then I'm going to fill it with yellow. I'm gonna go over that line again, tracing it carefully, and then add a little bit of a lighter orange there, and then even though yellow is probably not going to show up on this brown paper too much, I'm still going to use it. And that looks, I really, I really like that color. So I did orange on the outside and then yellow on the inside because they're nice next to each other on the color wheel. And in order to make this a pattern, I've got to do pink on this one too. So I've got my dark pink and my light pink. So then it's going to be this pattern of pink, orange, pink, orange. If I've got a pattern up here, I'm doing darker color around the edge and then do my lighter pink on the inside. If I get my top pattern done, then I could start my pattern that would be in the middle. Now, I'm not gonna color all this because I do want you to have enough work time but another good option for coloring could be like blue. I could do dark blue and light blue, dark, um, dark green and light green. But the thing is, is that blue is next to purple on the color wheel, but blue is also next to green. So I'm gonna outline this with this blue, and then I'm gonna fill in the inside with green. So carefully and neatly go around it, probably going around it more than once. Once I do that, I might shade it in a little bit on the inside. But then I'm gonna fill the inside in with green. So blue is right next to green. So not only are we practicing line and shape and color and pattern, we're really looking at the color wheel as colors that work together to mix. This is one that has more done on it. I don't expect you to get all the way done, but I was kind of using this one as a way to kind of show this one. So you can see that I would continue working on my pattern. These dots, since this is a big 
shape with a small shape, it's gonna be two colors. So it's black, white, purple, blue, black, white, purple, blue, black, white, and it makes my pattern because it repeats. Um, this is another one. This one has some smaller dots on it. This one could work well. I've just got a blue, white, blue, white pattern. This one doesn't have any color on it yet, but, um, well, this one doesn't, but this one has squares with diamonds, but you can see it has a pattern at the top, a pattern in the middle, and then a pattern at the bottom. This one is one that's colored in too. Okay, so I'll try to put these up on the board for you to see as inspiration for working on your art. So let's have fun.